We're going to press record, so don't forget later. Good job. By the things that you hear, we're going to turn it All right, good to see you, Chris, Andrea. We got all sorts of good people in the house, both here in person and on Oh boy, we got, we got two minutes. Oh, you did? I'm like, oh, cool. that's interesting. I'm going to narrate this whole thing. Is it candy? Um, oh, okay. so he's told yeah. people we kick off at 9 a.m. That's perfect. <laughs> But having said that, it's not a clock. Yeah, that is. And I'm ready to launch here. Paul is ready to launch. I'm going to shut up. Uh, you're on mute. Are you needed? No? Oh, uh, do you want slides? Yeah, all right, we're going to do it. We're going to do the thing. All right, let's see. <laughs> I already did the work. Okay. Yes. Let's see if the clicker works, eh? Oh. Oh, yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock on Wednesday, and that means it's time for One Million Cups. Uh, looking around, I'm really encouraged. We're almost back to pre-pandemic levels. Looks like a good crowd. And we have people on Zoom as well. So we're One Million Cups, uh, helping entrepreneurs nationwide every Wednesday. It's time to check in. So take your phone and point it at the QR code on those pieces of paper lying around. If you come to three One Million Cups uh, sessions, you'll get a pen. If you check in for six, you'll get a notebook. And I mean, people are fighting with these, so uh, do it. Okay, so what's our mission? Our mission is to ease the barrier of entry for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship is a difficult and challenging and sometimes disappointing journey and you need help along the way. So um, this community is here to help you, help you discover your unknown unknowns every Wednesday at nine. And how do we do that? Uh, we do that because there's a mission uh, outlined to us by the Kauffman Foundation and there's close to 200 chapters of Million Cups all across the country. Um, they train the organizers and we in turn train the presenters to have a consistent format uh, from one Wednesday to the next. Um, we're all, we are the only one in New Mexico, but there are many other chapters in our region. I've been to some of these physically. Um, if you can't get enough million cups, if you get up early, you can go to a seven o'clock session 
on the East Coast, which where it's nine o'clock. And then when you're done, have another cup of coffee and come here. So uh, you can also physically travel to some of those locations and you'll find a room full of people you don't meet, but it'll look exactly like Million Cups here. <laughs> the questions will be very similar and the presentations will be similar because of that uniform format. So go ahead and do that. What are our key pillars? Uh, presentations, not pitches. So in a pitch, your company's perfect. It's gonna displace Facebook, Google, Amazon all at once, right? It's not actually like that inside a startup, as many of you know. Uh, you have challenges, you have uh, shortcomings, you have things you don't know, things you don't know how to do, and you have to expose those vulnerabilities and, and ask for help. And it's not helpful to expose your vulnerabilities <laughs> to people you're asking for money, right? So, so it's safe to do it here, where the worst it gets is about as bad as a pillow fight, and that's a lot easier <laughs> than an investment pitch. So uh, we're, we're interested in authentic connections. I mean, get to know people. They know something you don't know. They know people you don't know. Maybe you can help them. You know things that you think everybody knows that many people don't know. So when you start connecting with people informally in this setting and talking afterwards, um, you're gonna make some connections that eventually one of you is gonna be able to help the other person or both of you are gonna be able to help the third person. So go ahead and do that. We're run for the community, by the community. All of the organizers are volunteers. We're not um, crazily committed to altruism. We all get something out of it. And we're radically and intentionally inclusive. So all kinds of people, all kinds of businesses, from whiteboard companies to tentpole companies that don't really have anything to gain from us here, uh, present here. And everybody's welcome. Everybody has an opportunity to learn and to teach. All right, here's our, whoops, there's our mission, which is, uh, more of the same, right? It's a national program. Really, this mission is very, very simple. We're here to launch entrepreneurs on their journey and do what we can uh, to make this a thriving entrepreneurial community. And with that, I'd like to say that it's easy to apply to present. If you have a business that makes money by selling things for less than it costs to produce them to people <laughs> who are not your boy, you're eligible to speak at 1 million cups. We prefer companies that were five years or less, but we regularly break that rule. Um, some companies that haven't got product in market are also welcome to present because they've received funding. So if you've got um, funding with a comma or two in it and you don't have a product in market yet, we'd love to hear what your plans are. So we're kind of bending the rules that way too. <clears throat> it's easy to apply. You talk to any one of the organizers and, or you can go to the, uh, I will not say easy to use website. <laughs> you can go to the website that's been provided for us and attempt to register. Okay, but, but basically just talk. <laughs> All right, and uh, here's the organizing team. Uh, I'm Paul Sauter, Chief Scientific Officer of Equiseek. Uh, Lisa Atkins is taking a well-deserved uh, vacation. Uh, she's our organizer here at uh, Fat Pipe, which has been hosting us eight years now. No. And uh, Eric Renz Whitmore right here uh, is keeping computers from melting down to the extent that he can. Uh, Adam is here today and Sonia is online. So talk to any of us and there's room on this slide for an additional person. If you would like to embed yourself in the organizing team for One Million Cups, learn a lot about entrepreneurship and organizing these events, uh, please talk to any of us. Uh, we could use some help and you probably know some folks that we don't know. So with that, we come to thank our sponsors, Fat Pipe, who's been a generous host for all these years. Jason Collin Photography, always making us look good, uh, more than organized organizing your stuff, your mind, and creamer for your coffee, and Foundation for Sustainable Living, uh, keeping us caffeinated, uh, and Vibe Solutions when they're here, providing tea for uh, those folks trying to kick the demon bean, and Noventum Custom Software, making great software and providing donuts and other baked goods. All right, I'll hand it back That's to amazing. you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Paul. Let's see, we're gonna stop the, sh the uh, share. And I'm going to invite Adam up here to, uh, I'm going to try and do this. Uh, I'm going to invite Adam up here, one of our uh, organizers, to, um, to introduce our speaker. Good morning. Uh, so Jason has been uh, coming for since August, and it's been a big transition for him um, because he's really wanted to um, do what he's doing, uh, but he, he uh, he started out working within companies, like being part of the group and uh, the nonprofits and making something really change. And he'd like to bring that effect to more people and more from a angle where he's got his own business, which has been a big dream for him. So it's been a great time talking to him and uh, you could come on up. Yeah. <laughs> so.
the uh, and I'm looking forward to his pre his presenting to to make a difference so other people here in the area can make a difference. All right. Excellent. Thanks, Adam. And I'll get this up in just a second. All right. All right. We're gonna. Well, first of all, if people get to see your face online, so that's good before uh, right. yes. <laughs> before we yeah, throw before the slides in there. Slides on top. All, right. Yes. all right, well, good morning. Uh, it is uh, so good to be here this morning. I know you have a lot of different things uh, for your time and your schedule. And so being here, I know, is a sacrifice of sorts. And so thanks for being a part of this community. Um, like Adam said, I jumped in here uh, in August and have been coming fairly frequently. Uh, that first uh, week, I was able to get connected with Invive. And uh, so th these are great places for connection, great places um, for learning. Um, I do have a handout available as well. And so it's kind of scattered around. If you want to kind of pass those around, make sure you have that. If you're online, you can go to that link and download a copy of it, uh, crestleaders.com slash 1MC. Um, and there's a PDF version of it there. Um, I'm going to be talking about that in just a minute. Um, so my name is Jason Burnett, and I am the founder of Crest Leaders. And uh, it is a consulting and coaching group to, to help leaders and organizations discover and unlock their full potential. Um, so why, why Crest? Um, for those of us in Albuquerque, uh, we know the crest to be that ridge along the top of the Sandia Mountains, right? And so this is something that is uh, special for me, uh, being third generation uh, New Mexican. Uh, my grandfather went to Albuquerque High School here in this building. Um, and so I'm excited uh, to be presenting here uh, in the library. This was once a library uh, for the high school. And so uh, this is a place that is special for me, a place that, that I love calling home. Um, I've grown up with these mountains and uh, it is something that growing up here, if you've been around uh, Albuquerque, if you've been around New Mexico for a while, there, there's a unique terrain, there's a unique history, a unique culture and education and faith and religion. All those things um, shaped me in ways that I didn't really appreciate until I left, like most people do, to never return. And then uh, here I am uh, coming back. Um, so I did my undergrad work at UNM in communication and business and uh, family studies and then graduated and moved to Dallas and never thought that I would be coming back. And I've been back now for 10 years. And so for the last 20 years, I've been working in nonprofit leadership. And uh, through that, I've done graduate work in business uh, conflict resolution, organizational leadership, uh, communication, and theology. And so these last nine years, I've been working as an executive director here in Albuquerque for a nonprofit. And through my time there, it was, it was a real turnaround situation, revitalized the mission, uh, set long-term vision, uh, sold the building and built a new $4 million uh, facility for them, uh, got them out of debt, and then exited uh, this year uh, to, to leave them to, to move on into the next season, next phase. Um, so the crest, the reason I titled it this, is this meaningful symbol for me in my leadership journey. Um, when you think about the crest, uh, there are different viewpoints from around the city, around the state, where you can see uh, this impossible climb at times. Um, but then, of course, you can go up to the top and have these amazing views from the top. And so for each of us, our leadership journeys really weave in and out of different trails. And having a guide for those trails can make all the difference. And so for me, I am passionate about helping others discover and unlock their full potential. Uh, this is an important thing to discover, right? That, that just because you see that it's there, you also have to be able to have a key to unlock it. And so for me, this comes really out of some personal values that I have, um, values um, that uh, are uh, values that, that are rooted in the Hebrew scripture, uh, Micah 6, 8, uh, where God requires us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. And for me, those have driven really who I am as a leader and who I want to be as a consultant. To act justly means that I'm working for the greater good of all, that um, I have a deep concern for and inclusion of others. Uh, to love mercy means that I'm working to be compassionate and to be fully present uh, with the people I work with and I come in contact with. Uh, to walk humbly uh, means that I'm trying to live with self-awareness uh, with gratitude, with authenticity, um, and vulnerability. 
And so with this mission and values, um, I find myself in a season of life where I really want to help others. I want to be in this phase where I'm, I'm helping others, um, not because I've fully arrived, uh, but because I want to join with you in the journey. So through Crest Leaders, I use my experience. I use my training to help unlock leaders and teams. Uh, I've also partnered with an organization called Giant Worldwide uh, that helps bring uh, together for my clients a wide range of tools, uh, content, assessments, and material used by organizations worldwide. Organizations like Google, US Air Force, Chick-fil-A, and Nike. And so through custom offerings, I'm able to, to provide workshops and training, facilitation of group coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching and consulting. And I help create what we call 100X leaders. Uh, these are leaders that are 100% healthy and the X is a multiplying leader, one that is expanding in their capacity. And so I want you to think about organizations that you're involved in. Maybe it's the business that you run, the business that you're a part of. Uh, maybe you sit on a board of an organization or you're part of a different civic organization um, that you participate at. And when you look at those teams, what are the things that are really impacting the effectiveness of that team? And this is where your handout comes in um, because I, I wanna present more than just my business. I wanna present something that you can take with you that's helpful as well. So take this worksheet with you um, and spend some time, especially here at the beginning of the new year, evaluating yourself and your team in these different areas. Um, the first is this idea of communication. Uh, we know that there's a breakdown in communication if there's drama, if there's unnecessary conflict, if there's inefficiency, if there's a dropping of the ball. Um, so everyone speaks within an organization, but not everyone is heard. So understanding your leadership voice and how you present yourself and how people see you is important. Um, this helps build in relationships because when you see things like gossip and mistrust and turf wars and toxic environments, you know relationships <laughs> are breaking down, right? And we all know, we, we hear chuckles, right? We, we, we've been in those organizations where you see that. And the problem is, is these first two key areas are creating momentum for alignment. And oftentimes management is focused on alignment and execution and they neglect the communication, the relationship side. And so alignment is where there's organizational clarity, uh, where we, we get clear on a vision and goals. Execution is where we're, we're getting things done, right? We have a good workflow for getting those things done. Capacity is that uh, amount of, of, of potential that we have to be able to produce. And so this becomes a flywheel where these things are going well, we get momentum. And when these things are not going well, uh, we see a breakdown and things stall out. Um, so in your own leadership, you know, grade yourself. Think about uh, in each of these areas, uh, where, where are you weak? Where are you strong? Where are some things that you need to work on this year? Um, and what is it costing you for those things not to be at 100% uh, when we're not uh, investing in these things? And if you were to solve these things, how much more efficient uh, would you become? Um, so as, as I think about uh, my work with clients, I understand that, that every client is unique. Every client is, is different and they have a unique situation that they need to, to work through. And so what I do is I come in and try to discover and understand their unique needs to, to diagnose what it is that they're needing and then proposing a set of custom solutions, a combination of these different tools um, and different resources uh, to be able to provide help for those organizations to unlock and discover uh, their their true potential. And, and for me, I really want to be seeing these as long-term engagements. I think workshops, we've all been to a conference before, right? Where, where we go to a workshop, we go to a conference and there's this big boost of inspiration. And somewhere on the flight home, we forget everything that we've just learned, right? And so these long-term relationships are really important because that's what establishes and creates transformation over time, working through these uh, situations, uh, having kind of a deep dive uh, and intensive coaching. Um, so, so these are the things I'm working on. Uh, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm in what Brene Brown calls an FFT. And if you don't know what that is, go look it up. Um, but uh, this, is, this is where I'm at. I'm fumbling around. I'm learning. I'm, I'm experimenting as I go. And so I have three key areas that are kind of this next horizon, next challenges for me that I want to bring to the One Million Cups group to kind of help me think through. Um, the first is this industry network. Um, I've been working in churches for the last 20 years, and that's not my ideal client right now. 
And so I, I don't have kind of that industry to get into. I'm working with others who come out of the construction industry. And so they have all those connections or uh, pe people who are working in behavioral health and they have those connections. I, I don't have that industry. Um, and kind of connected to that, I don't have a clear focus on a niche yet. Mm -hmm. And so how do I gain that? I know it's important. I would coach anybody to say that you need that, but I don't yet have that, right? And so how would I find that? And then scaling to add more partners. I, I want, I want to, I have a, a kind of a loose connection, informal partnership with others that are doing this work with me, um, but I'd like a more formalized way to, to bring others into being able to do that. And so these are really my questions um, for you today. How would you solve these problems for yourself? Um, how would you coach me in, in these? How, how would you kind of break into an industry that you are not a part of yet? How would you focus in on a particular niche and how would you scale and add uh, those partners? So I turn back over to Adam and uh, look forward to our Q&A. Um, bring up you so I can see where people should stand. Oh, yeah. let's see. Okay, so if you're standing generally in this place here, the camera see? can see you. You're gonna don't make a line. I have it. Don't standing. somewhere it's like that. Holding on. And then, then Jason will sort of squeeze over here and push his stuff aside. If you get real close, <laughs> and keep moving towards. It. Uh, online, you can just enter your stuff on to there, and Sonia and Eric will make sure you guys get a uh, chance to get in here as everyone's <laughs> lining up. And uh, we'll, we'll ask Jason some questions and help uh, see how we can help guide him and how he can help guide us. And we just, I'll make one other comment. So. Um, it sounds like the microphone's pretty good. If we have some trouble, I think if the folks online can let us know that, uh, that you're not hearing very well, we'll ask Jason to repeat the question. Uh, that in the house. Oh, you, sounds good. Would you bring up his contact information? I think it's the last slide. Or was that already up? Yeah. I think I, what, what we'll do is I, I kind of want to hear see the faces so we can also monitor the chat and do a few other things. So I'm going to do that for right now, but we'll bring that up before the last slide. Great. All right. Excellent. All right. Do we have any questions here in the room? Oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Miriam is on it. <laughs> so you said, oh, Miriam Ortiz, if you know more than organized, um, you said you have a good idea of who your ideal client is and that it's not churches right now. Well, yeah. Or you have a, you would like not. to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the niche and the ideal client thing go hand in hand, but they're yeah. very different depending okay. on who you talk to. Um, so, um, I actually have a exercise I walk my clients through that helps them get really clear, really fast on the niche and the ideal client. So okay. I wanted to offer that awesome. first, but, um, what have you done so far to figure that out? Um, so I have been working with people that I like to work with and, um, and start. I'm looking, I'm working with people who will pay me and then I decide if I like them or not. So, um, also a good start. Yeah. So those are kind of you. the starts, right? Uh, and so I also, because of my values of, of having like this, uh, desire to help for the greater good, mm -hmm. kind of the mission and the purpose of the organizations that I work with is pretty important as well. Okay. Um, and so, for example, I'm working with Imbibe. They work with behavioral health. That's something that I can get really excited about, and uh, they're great to work with. Um, I'm working with a college that I, I can be excited about the mission that they're working with. And so, some of it's going to be what the purpose is behind the organization, mm -hmm. um, and then even the personalities. Especially, this is a 12 month engagement, right? It's like I'm, I'm going to be in one on ones with you once a month. I need to like being able to sit down with you and have a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need some like sitting down and having a cup of coffee with me. So that's, that's, that's how far I've, I've gotten into it. Okay. I have another quick idea about that commitment of 12 months. Okay. I know for some of my clients, it's always really scary to commit for it 12 is. months. Yeah. Do you have one smaller offer that can scale mm -hmm. up into the 12 months? So yeah, definitely. So I have, I have um, one-time workshops that are kind of an entry point uh, that kind of become, it wouldn't be my ideal thing because it's a, a short-term sure. thing, but it at least gets you exposed to working together and <coughs> to the material. Uh, next up would be kind of a six month intensive uh, okay. coaching kind of phase. And ideally it's long term. So yeah. once again, it's all, it's all very custom. There's not a, there, there's some pieces of it that are a 50 week program, right? So mm -hmm. that 50 week program is a 50 week program. Right. Uh, but there's others that we can we can go to lunch and talk for an hour. Okay. And do that as well. 
Cool. I think that'll help you nail down that ideal client awesome. as well for the, at least the first couple of years yeah. as they get really solid. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. I guess that's come on over here, please. The the hot place to stand. I, know, I, know. I don't know. Really <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to stand in front of everybody. You've seen so um, hi, my name is Marlene Brown. I am uh, faculty in photovoltaics at CNM. And so uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, or make a suggestion about if you don't know who you exactly want to work with, if you have an idea to uh, maybe do some either discounted or free consultations in groups that you want to target. So pick four or five different groups of folks that you might want to work with and then show them what you can offer them right. and do okay. something where you're going to either maybe involve a group or uh, in a way that you can people then want to come to you because people aren't just going to come to you oh, obviously yeah. if they don't know who you are or what you're right. yeah so yeah. that's my two cents no I, I love doing that one of the things I've, I've talked to lisa about on the back side of your handout um, I'm going to be doing some leadership workshops here at Cat Pipe over the next few months. And so that'd be an opportunity for you or people that you know to come in. We're going to do that the fourth Thursday of the month, uh, starting in February. So, so similar thing. that'll be one way. Well, then go more. to where these yeah. other people are. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, there's only a specific group that right. comes to this. Right. Yeah. That's Thank you. Sense. I appreciate it. Okay. Hi. I'm Dr. Jessica Troy. I work at CNM and I'm a copywriter. Um, so what I was wondering is what is your unique value proposition for clients? Um, I know you're trying to figure out who your niche market is and who your ideal client is gonna be, but they also want to know why you, um, because there are a lot of consultants out there and it's a big, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big industry. So what do you provide that's so unique and so valuable that the ideal client will come to you? Right. Once they find out, you know, who the heck you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that there is a challenge of this, right? Because it is a crowded market, right? Anybody can put up a sign that says coach or consultants. Um, and so what qualifications are there? What uh, uh, brings kind of a unique proposition? Um, part of it is the, the giant uh, worldwide material that I have. Um, so licensing and, and certification to that. Um, I'm also working on an ICF certification in coaching. So that kind of helps set you apart in the coaching world. And so I'm hoping to have that done this next year um, as well. Um, and so some of it is just the, the odd thing about consulting and coaching is like, I'm the product, right? Which, mm -hmm. you know, I don't like to sell myself as a product. So my experience, my personality, my training is kind of the unique offering. And it may be for you and it may not be. And uh, so. so I know you said churches aren't your, your yeah. ideal client at this moment, but uh, I find a lot like our group here, churches have lots of various types of people mm -hmm. who come to them. Right. So that might be a way for you yeah. to kind of sneak yourself yeah. in and yeah. say, hey, I know yeah. you guys don't need me, but what about all of the people? All? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the people that come to churches. Yeah, and so I, I, am, I am pursuing some of those networks as well. And so trying to, trying to connect with people that I've connected to those churches. So that's great. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. I'm going to step oh, over here as, oh. as an actual human being. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Eric Whitmore like, with what's, what's Rumbling Cups. <laughs> Usually I sit over here. Um, so I, I know sometimes, whether it's an organization, you're doing you know, change management, or, or as an individual, some you don't necessarily know quite when you're ready, but there are clearly some folks and organizations that aren't ready to go through sort of a leadership process. I'm curious if there's like any kind of guidelines or suggestions you have to folks that are maybe getting into the position where they can take advantage of working with you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, so part of it is that that leadership flywheel is kind of an assessment tool to use to kind of start the conversation, like what's broken and what is it costing you, right? Mm -hmm. And so. The, the idea of helping identify the pain points that you're in and is that pain point significant enough and costing you enough to do something about it, right? So if you have communication problems, everybody has communication problems, everybody has unwanted conflict, uh, but, is it, but is it costing you enough to really uh, do something about it and uh, start uh, 
bringing in help. And so it's really, it's, it's really conversations to help identify how much this is costing you. Uh, what does your employee turnover look like, right? Because we can, you know, Gallup has numbers on how much it costs uh, to, to replace employees, right? And so uh, do you have high turnover? This is, this is a, a fixed number that you can start mm -hmm. to, to look at. And so uh, it, it's really the, the, the pain of staying the same versus the pain of change, right? So uh, <laughs> if, if, you know, staying the same now becomes more and more painful, uh, then it's time to start the change. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thanks. Let's see, we're going to take one more question here and then we'll go to online. Okay. The three items you, you had on the last one was the uh, industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I'm Clifton Chadwick with Comunicaciones Coco Valley, and I've had a chance to work with a lot of different people, and everybody has these issues. Oh, yeah. So I don't, I'm not clear. I can't help you narrow it down to the industry. In terms of your niche, it strikes me that that really is more a function. It strikes me that that's a function of the size of the organization, right? Uh, in my organization, which is me, I, I have pretty clear communications with me most of the time. Sometimes, <laughs> that's, that's a very, that's <laughs> a <laughs> <laughs> issue. <laughs> 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 Um, but so anyway, it seems yeah. like your niche is going to be, you know, between big enough and not too big. And then the question I have is about the scaling. Uh, why is that important? Um, some of it is the building a business versus just building a job. Uh, the idea that if, if I have others working with me, it, it creates a a pool of people to share work. It creates uh, possibilities of some more passive income options or, uh, and also, you know, thinking about an exit strategy, right? Like what, what do I have to, to exit out of and have some sort of assets when I'm done, right? And so, so thinking about retirement. So Giants got you on that. Right. Right, because they're providing you with all the stuff. They've already done all that. Right. So, so part of so part of what Giant is doing is they are, they are providing a lot of intellectual property, and so that's not something that I do have to sell. Uh, but what I do have is the client base and the team that is brought brought together. I guess that. the reason I'm asking is because one of the things is that you are the guy, right? Right. Yeah. And so, to the degree that you add people and scale up then you're going to be dealing with all of these issues within your own organization. Yeah. And so I guess I think you have them ordered in the right way. <laughs> it it like, is last on the list. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to ask a couple of folks online. Uh, we had uh, Chris who had a comment suggestion and Phil has got some comments. So Chris. Yeah, Jason, good to see you again. Uh, glad you, you took this step here recently to, to get out on your own. That's great. Um, so like I said in the, in the chat, it's more of a statement than a question. Uh, oh, sorry, forgot protocol. So uh, Chris Corbine from CNM Ingenuity. I run Activate NM, which is a program that helps entrepreneurs, um, early stage entrepreneurs get off the ground with some resources. So Jason, like I mentioned, um, uh, SBDC, Small Business Development Center, uh, ran by CNM. Um, they can do some market analysis for you for free. Um, I can, I'll, I'll hit you up on LinkedIn with links as well. And then the small business um, assistance through Sandia Labs and um, Lanl, um, even though it's not necessarily a lab problem set that you have, they have data nerds that can crunch the numbers for you and analyze your potential market. Um, prob you probably have to give them something to go seek out. Um, once you've determined that, I think they could be of help. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. And we'll bring up Phil just a sec. Hi. Amy? <laughs> <laughs> me? Yes. Yeah. Good. 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 Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome from uh, New York. Um, a couple of things uh, you were talking about, like to. Um, question uh you started off by saying you, you like to work with clients that you like and you get along with i mean that's great i i like to like work with clients that i like and i get along with sorry protocol phil wilton from executive outcomes um i'm in a similar business to you 
Um, and, and I work on strategic uh, development of organizations. So how, how much of your like of your clients is semantics and, and <laughs> are you prepared to actually work with clients that maybe you don't agree with wholeheartedly, but obviously they could be clients and they could be good revenue streams. So that's, that's kind of one point. Um, you said that you are a product and that, you know, you're, you're, well, yeah, that's what you said, you're a product. But, but are you really a product? You're given a service. And, and I think you should, you should embrace the fact that you're giving a service to your potential clients, but you need to clearly state what your service does for your clients. You mentioned pain points, and I wrote that down before you got there. But what are the, what are the pain points that you are wanting to cure for your clients? What, do you, what is your passion and your mission that says, I can help various companies grow, even though you've not been in those industries before, um, because you have the right leadership skills to take an organization through? Um, and, um, yeah, I, I guess that's, that's what I've got. I think, I think you, it doesn't matter whether you like them. I think you've given a service. You need to be clearly defined what that service is and, and how, and let your, your potential clients know how that is going to help them. Right. Good. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the liking the people that you work with, uh, certainly when you're hungry, uh, that starts, that, that value starts to slide a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and, and like can be a very uh, broad relative term. So, so um, I, you know, I would like to, to, to like spending time with you, uh, but that, that can be a pretty diverse group, right? So that's, that, that, that would be. Um, as far as the, the services, I feel like my, my experience, my training is going to be in really the first two parts of that flywheel, right? Communication and relationships, uh, getting into alignments and, and, and through those others, uh, there, there becomes a little bit more industry specific. I've got some tools that can help in those areas uh, to talk through those things, uh, but those are going to start become a little bit more industry specific. So, so for me, uh, communication skills, uh, and with that comes an assessment uh, that Giant provides mm -hmm. that, that helps assess your communication styles. And we can chart that all as a team uh, to see how your team is communicating and how they're, they're communicating well and how they're beating each other up in ways that they shouldn't be. <laughs> and so, so that would be a, a service area that, that is very specific. Um, and then into more of that relational development. And so the, those are the two pieces that I would kind of uh, anchor in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of piecing that together with a few of the other comments, like the ideal client, the, the things like that, there, there certainly is a certain size organization, right? You need to be a leader of, of a team. Right. And so a team needs to be, you know, four or five uh, other people that you're leading. And so uh, it's certain, the, the solopreneur is not going to be the ideal client for me uh, at, at all. And so uh, and in, in, within a large corporation, too, that there, there's a whole uh, learning and development kind of piece that needs to be done there that is probably outside of the scope of what I can handle as an individual. So. Um, so I've just got a follow on comment to that, if that's OK. One of the things that I've, I've learned in, 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 with my clients is that I've gone into industries that I formerly had no experience of whatsoever. And um, it's actually turned out to be a great asset. It can be yeah. a value. It can be a strength because what you're going in is into, it doesn't matter what industry you're going into, there is a set problem that you're trying to cure, yeah? And so um, you should you should uh, also use that as um, a value statement, if you like, that you if, if, if your clients are questioning your capability because you don't know their industry, 
that that is not a barrier to you actually helping them out. You can help them out because the basics of management principles of growing a company, of marketing, sales, and all those other things are much the same. You just have to apply it to industries. So um, don't don't be hesitant to um, push that as a value proposition that you've got experience across uh, a wide forum of uh, in industries. Yeah, I, I appreciate hearing that framed as a value proposition because um, I, I certainly was thinking in, in that line of what I have to offer is not industry specific, right? And so, but to really say that that's a, that's a real valuable thing to have mm -hmm. an outsider view that's not consumed by your industry jargon, right? Uh, to kind of bring a different perspective. I, I think that is that is a value. And I was thinking of that as a, as a high value proposition. So thank you. So you have a question or? Yeah, I've got, yeah. So um, there's last call for questions and okay. things after me. But uh, so you, there's two things here. One is you asked for stories of, how we've um, learned to like do some of these things and figure this out. And I know that recently I made a huge shift with my business realizing that I was actually kind of after two different things. You know, there was the high, the high money value part of my business, which brings in money to the general um, getting to continue to do everything I do. And then there was the other part that is really kind of like really my passion and they both sort of connect and uh, it took time and pushing on what I really wanted to do and figuring out what it was. So like, I really want to ignite creative tension. So I do that through organizing some, which is I consider quick fix. And then I also do a thing where I'm actually working with people over the long haul about how their brains work to make it and get what they want. Right. And that I tried to put two together and it didn't really work. It was like, um, it was trying to force something onto a situation. So people weren't open to that. Right. And so that's a story I've got behind that. But what I, what I think really came from that was pushing on, yeah, I think kind of like your values. So how is, is humility a big part of what you're doing? Um, for me, it is coming into a situation, not trying to convince you that I have all the answers, um, but willing to go through this conversation with you. Um, I'm not trying to sell myself as, as an expert as much as I am somebody who's on the journey with you. Um, I think part, part of humility, I think, is authenticity. And uh, like this, this is who I am. And this is part of the, I, I'm, I'm in this phase of my life where you know, back to kind of the, the, the pushback on people who you like, I'm kind of in this phase of life where I'm like, life is too short to work with people that I don't like. Um, and I'll figure out a way to make the money off of that. I'm not looking for, I'm, I'm not looking for this huge get rich kind of thing. Um, I want to enjoy who I'm working with. I want to help people who are helping other people do that well. And that's kind of that authentic thing. And I just, I, I am who I am and you're going to have to be okay with that. And I'm okay with who you are. So, right. <laughs> Cool. So, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Corey. Um, so just touching on that, like, oh yeah. Right. Protocol. I'm, Everybody's forgetting. Protocol. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am Lori Kerr, and I'm with N5 Solutions. Okay. So going back to the liking clients, because Lisa and I are like the same, right? And we want people that we want to work with people that have the same values, right. and I totally appreciate that. The thing to consider or what we're learning, let me just share what we're learning, is we have clients. I would say that all of our clients that we've done so far, we like them. And sometimes we hate them. <laughs> That's <laughs> not words. I mean, so we just, maybe we just, it's not always as fluid. It's, it's, not, it's not always as fluid, right? And, and, you know, and this kind of goes back to my dating life. It's the same thing I learned there is you can screen, you can ask all the questions, but until you spend time with that person, yeah. you really realize that their, their values match up with what they say, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't always happen that way. This is true. Yeah. So, um, so two things. So one, just to be aware of that. And there are things that you will have to manage 
yourself, like Lisa and I have to manage ourselves and our expectations and um, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, like we have to figure out, okay, what's triggering us, right? Sometimes the person we're working with triggers us and it's not any fault of theirs. It's just the baggage we bring into our lives, right? right. Yeah. And I want to offer something to you since you're going into this as a solo entrepreneur, one of the things that Lisa and I have is we have each other to kind of figure things out or shift. Like if the client is really getting under my skin, Lisa can take the lead <laughs> and hopefully it does, they don't get under both our skins, but usually that doesn't happen. Should this, anyway, what I'm offering to you is if you come across a situation and you're like, oh my God, I really thought this was going to go well and I'm struggling. Please feel free to use this as your right. network to talk yeah. things through and see if we can be yeah. that outside looking in yeah. for you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's part of, part of the scalability on that last challenge is not just from a profit standpoint, but also from a camaraderie standpoint mm -hmm. of, of working with others. <clears throat> I'm kind of a lone ranger and I kind of know that about myself, but I also need people. And so I've got to bring people into yeah. that. And so that's why I have coffee with Lila and that's why I have a therapist <laughs> and that's why I work with Lisa and Lori and, uh, and things like that. So I can kind of have those other humans in my life. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. All right. Thank you for, uh, I'll let you, uh, I've got two questions for you. Red or green? It depends on the protein that's with it. Uh, so yeah, so I'm I'm complicated that way. So uh, I like I like red with beef and green with chicken. So great, yeah. And um, and then what is what can this community do for you? Um, these conversations are super super helpful. I I thank you for hard questions and offers of support. Um, I. I want you to help me unlock the potential in others, right? Whether that's connecting me with coffee or uh, giving feedback, things like this. Like how, how can we help others uh, really live into and unlock their full potential? Thank you. Awesome. All right. Very good. Let's see, let's see how we're gonna do this. Um, so I see that there are folks, maybe a couple of folks online who are joining us for the first time. And first of all, for how many of you is this the first time you've been here this year? <laughs> All right, yeah, trick question. Just trying to get the, you know, we had a we had a sample one the other day. Just kidding. Um, great to see that. Uh, how many folks uh, consider themselves entrepreneurs? All right, all right, that's a good, good, good representation. I do see that there's some some faces that I don't recognize. I might be face blind this year. That might be something I'm carrying into the year. So if you're new, if you haven't uh, been to One Nine Cups, you know, in the past year or so, you know, 2021 or something, uh, I'd invite you to come up and just, you know, who are you? What is it you do? Just a real quick, you know, sentence to sentence kind of version of who you are. We'd love to see some of the other people that are in the room because, you know, it's all about the community. It's all about the people here who are presenting, asking questions, working with other folks. So I will invite folks up here. I, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. Adam, can you put a couple people on the spot? Marty, <laughs> Marty, get out there. Marty's back. Yeah, that's right. Back. You can say, Marty, you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Marty Bonacci. Um, I have a business making custom snowboards called Custom Cult. Uh, we do mass customization, so it's not like some guy with a block of wood and see a in his garage, <coughs> some automated machines that, that systematize that process. Uh, I also am the lead instructor at the Deep Dive Coding Bootcamp at CNM in the full stack web development. So that's my other day job. And then we're starting a whole other custom shoe division from custom calls. Oh, nice. cool. And I presented here a few years ago. I haven't been here since yeah. pre pandemic. Yeah. I want to hear about the so shoes. Great yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Hi, my name is Corbin. Um, I run a technology service providing company called Simple Quantum. Uh, no, that, that has nothing to do with quantum computing. 
although that can be a little bit misleading at sometimes at times. Uh, we specialize in a ticket response time of one minute, uh, average response time of about one minute. Um, and my passion is helping small businesses find uh, cybersecurity solutions uh, because they tend to be less represented in that space. Um, my uh, previous positions, I guess, uh, was for national defense contractors. Um, my last significant position was uh, director of technology for, for national defense contractors. So um, I jumped off that board and trying to do my own thing. And I'm um, looking to meet people in the community. So if anybody wants to talk to me about having a cup of coffee, have lunch, something along those lines, I'd be more than happy to, to meet all of you. So thank Thanks very much. Hello, I am Lila Earwood. I've been here once before. I think I was here maybe in October or November. Um, Jason Burnett um, invited me and um, I'm here of course today primarily to support him, but I, I love One Million Cups. I think this is such a great group and such a great idea. So this is cool, love this. So um, I am about to start a master's program in social work um, to be a therapist. Um, and then we'll go on to do my PhD after that. But in the meantime, I'm kind of hanging out, which is weird for me. I worked with Jason for almost a decade. And um, so it's kind of a strange place not to be in school or work. I'm working with a group on a mediation training firm that we want to get together. We're really slow at starting it. Um, but we would love to do mediation uh, group training for people and schools and organizations just to help their employees learn how to um, just interact in a healthy way and um, and mediate, you know, if they need to with one another and just help that conflict um, in organizations. But again, we're really slow at getting that off of the ground, um, but that's basically what I do. So I'm glad to be here. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Good morning. Um, my name's Andrew. Just shift over a little bit more so we can get you both there. Awesome, Great, thank awesome. you. Steve. <laughs> um, so this is my first actual real in-person million cups. We have been on Zoom before, probably at the beginning of the pandemic, so a while back. So it's exciting to see everyone kind of getting together. Um, I'm also a social worker. I went to Highlands and got my master's in social work and also in business. And I came out and you know, I worked in behavioral health, I worked with youth, I worked with CYFD, lots of different in the prisons aspects in New Mexico to kind of get my experience and see where do I want to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, and business is the route that I said, I, I want to find a business where I can really help people in the community, more specifically, learning financial literacy. So our biggest goal is to bring financial literacy more into New Mexico and teach from youth up to mm -hmm. our oldest adults about how money works. Um, and so, our business is a financial services organization. And we teach about not only leadership, but finances. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess just a little plug in right now, our growth over the last couple of years has just been one of those experiences that's just like, I wanna bring people along with us, mm -hmm. right? We've been placed in front of people who have helped us grow. And here in a couple of weeks, we're actually going to a leadership event um, where we're gonna to get to hear from people like John C. Maxwell. So I guess just a little plug in, if that's something that interests any of you. Um, I mean, that's a big part of what we do is we're, our job is to help place people in front of other leaders in order to learn leadership skills and learn about money. That's fantastic. Anything else to add in there? Okay, excellent. And I'll just say just a, a quick, I don't know, plug for ourselves. So uh, I'm thinking, and somebody else asked about Marty, <coughs> It's really easy to apply. One million cups.com slash Albuquerque. You go down, scroll down to the bottom of the page, click five or seven more times, and then it's a two minute process. <laughs> two minute process. It's pretty easy. Uh, we as, or, as organizers are glad to help you. Sounds like, you know, we'd love to hear a little more about your business. So awesome. thanks very much. Appreciate Thank you guys. It. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Amanda Brown. I work with Lisa and Maria and Vibe as of last month. Um, and my background is also I'm a licensed master social worker. I have my master's in public health. Uh, I have pivoted many times in my career. Um, I'm a return peace corps volunteer. And so a lot of the work that I've done in the past has been around 
helping individuals, families, and communities navigate conflict, change, in a whole wide range of things. And so I work with Lisa and Laurie at NVIBE doing coaching and consulting and training. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of training and facilitation skills as well. Um, but I'm also in the process of launching my own sort of life coaching business and my specialty is existential crises. So I think anybody who's sort of in that space of who am I, what am I doing? I need to make a change. I don't know how to do it or I'm too afraid to make that leap. That's where I, that's where I come in. Um, or welcome in. So anyway, this is my very first One Million Cups ever. Oh, wow. And yeah. Um, so thank you. It's, I, I'm, I left the nine to five gig as of December 1st. So brand new. Yeah. Yeah, one taker online. So, uh, so you'll come up on stage. We would like to hear from Catherine. Uh oh, I, we can't. You're still on mute, Catherine. Let's see. Sorry about that. I had to unmute on me usually on my computer and I'm on my iPad. Um, my name is Catherine Glenday. I am a um, licensed professional clinical counselor. I also have an um, MPH. Lisa was, um, Lisa at Invive invited me to come. My specialty in mental health and public health is people with disabilities. Um, I was disabled right before I was supposed to start and finish med school. I did start, I couldn't finish. It was before the ADA. And so now I work with people learning to live their best lives. And I apologize, I get emotional. I've had strokes and that's a side effect. But I'm trying to grow both a for-profit business and start a 501c3. The for-profit business is of course, mental health clinical services. I would also like to be able to offer consulting and training around disability accessibility to my peers in public health and the wider healthcare system. The 501c3 is going to be starting the first accessible um, uh, health promotion. So basics like sleep, exercise, diet, creativity, and address social determinants of health, and also build an expressive arts practice. So that's where I'm going. Thank you very much. Going to that there. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think, are we done? Looks like we're done in the house. I, Paul, why don't you close it up for us? Yeah, good day today. Yeah, it's been a great day. It's great to see attendance climbing back up, and it's great to see how people are reaching out to each other. So um, let's keep that going. I hope you've all got. Uh, achievable New Year's resolutions. If you need uh, encouragement, come here, stand up here, maybe next week, let us know how it's going on your checklist and uh, get out there and lift up entrepreneurship in New Mexico. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Yes, thank you. I was just typing. Hi, something. everyone. I'm Jesse. You guys all right? I literally can't.